Hey everybody, so remember when we saw that James Crumbly made threats to somebody? Well, it was the prosecution. So let's see the news article on this. The convicted father of the Oxford High School school shooter said in jailhouse phone calls that he wanted to ruin the prosecutor in the case against him and that she would be going to hell soon. Sources confirmed. James Crumbly made the comments to his sister while his case was pending. The sources close to the Oakland County Prosecutor's Office confirmed. The new details were first reported Monday by the Detroit Free Press. A Michigan jury last week found Crumbly guilty on all four charges of involuntary manslaughter for the shooting his son carried out, killing four classmates. Crumbly and his wife, Jennifer Crumbly, who was convicted on the same charges at a separate trial in February, are the first parents in America to be charged for a school shooting committed by their child. Crumbly allegedly told his sister that he was going to make it his goal in life to destroy Open County Prosecutor Karen McDonald saying that she was going to hell soon, that she better be scared and that she was done. The sources confirmed. There's a disagreement about what was said in the nature of what that stuff. His attorney, Mariel Lehman, said Monday, declining to expand on her characterization of Crumbly's conversation. And adding the lawyers on each side agreed to try to keep it out of the media. Lehman declined to comment further after NBC News confirmed the details of what was alleged to have told his sister. Asked about the threats Friday, McDonald said that he made a lot of threats, but that he, she didn't want to elaborate because she didn't want to give him more attention. I just don't think it's important to talk about, McDonald said then. Word of the alleged threatening statements first emerged publicly in the middle of Crumbly's trial. On March 7th, the judge signed in order of the prosecution and defense attorneys reached an agreement to restrict his jail communications. For the first Oops, excuse me. For the rest of the trial, Crumbly could talk only to his lawyer and legitimate clergy and do research to help his defense. But Prosecutor David Williams said in court that the restrictions could lift after a verdict was reached. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office said at the time that Crumbly's jailhouse communications had been limited due to threatening statements contacted Monday. The office said it had nothing further to add. While the sources wouldn't specify the frequency or exactly how many threats Crumbly allegedly made, they confirmed there were multiple ones in 2022, 2023, and as recently as January before the parents' trial began. The Crumbly son killed four students, Madison Baldwin, 17, Tate Meyer, 16, Hannah St. Juliana, 14, Justin Schilling, 17, and wounded seven other people when he opened fire with a handgun November 30th, 2021. Crumbly had bought the six hour, nine millimeter handgun days before the shooter used it. And prosecutors say it wasn't kept secured. McDonald last week called the facts egregious and said that the shooting was foreseeable and the parents could have prevented it with just the smallest efforts, which we know that he 
who was found guilty and so wasn't his wife. And they will be sentenced on the same day, April 9th. At the trial, school staff testified that both the parents were called to the school the day of the shooting about a drawing their son had made depicting a gun and a person who had been shot. Neither, neither of them told staff members he had access to a weapon and they said they couldn't take him home, citing work. Crumbly's defense maintains he had no way of predicting that his son would start shooting hours later. He wished that he had taken his son home that day if he had known what was going to happen. He would have made different decisions, Lehman said Monday, adding that Crumbly feels terrible about what happened to the families. Crumbly and his wife are scheduled to be sentenced April 9th. It is the first time the parents who cannot communicate with each other from jail could see each other since they attended joint hearings. Together before their trials were separated, they each faced a maximum of 15 years in prison. So they could each get a 15 year sentence. Um, and the parents are going back, um, trying to get the school to receive accountability um, for what happened in this case. So I know that they are not going to charge the school with anything, but they are going to see like if they can ch make changes and things like that. So Oxford school shooting victims, families call for accountability, and I will play this real quick. So let me share that screen with you guys. of the four teens killed in the Oxford school shooting are calling for a full investigation into the shooting by the state attorney general. They tell us today it's not about blame. It is about forcing change they believe has not happened at all. Sean Lay, live for us this evening. And Sean, the convictions of the shooter's parents do not mark the end of this. Absolutely, Karen. Good to see you. Good evening, everyone. Also, questions have not been answered. We know there's a guidepost solution investigation that has been completed, but Questions like why an emergency operation plan at the school was in place, but not fully implemented or followed. The third party investigation that was done so far, um, they only concentrate on the event, so small pieces leading up to the event, but um, the overall picture was, it was never drawn clearly enough. Craig Schilling and the parents of the Oxford school shooting victims in the wake of the tragedy when their kids or taken from them, say not nearly enough has happened to change. Threat assessments of at-risk kids in school. No school officials involved in that awful day have been held accountable under the law of governmental immunity. It's taking civil suits from the parents against school officials and now the state Supreme Court and federal court of appeals to decide if governmental immunity is unconstitutional. If a school system wants to do their best, they're never gonna do it because if they do something wrong, they're gonna be able to hide behind governmental immunity. If you don't have that and you set that bar, then everybody is going to try to do a better job and actually protect our children or you know, give these threat assessment policies or actually listen to them. The trials of James and Jennifer Crumley putting a spotlight on that meeting the morning of the shooting and the assessments made by a counselor and Oxford High School Dean of Students. You know he's got access to a gun. You've got his death his murder plan right here in front of you. You can't recognize that he's at the top of the mountain in crisis. And they don't have to answer to that. So far, no, until we hear from the state Supreme Court or that federal appeals court, six court of appeals down in Cincinnati. That's something to pay close attention to. Also, guys, the, the the parents are saying that you can't have change unless you have all the answers to start with. For Life Tonight, Sean Lane, local point. So right. All right, Sean.
in the schools did get funding, which I went over in my last slide on um, when James ended up getting the guilty verdict from the jury. So please guys, smash that like button, comment below, and thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys soon. Bye guys.